was to, and I'm actually doing a book review tonight, and of course I'm being quiet so as not to wake my father from his slumber. Uh, the book is by Dr. Deepak Chopra, one of my idols, and it's called The Spontaneous Film of Desire. Now, this book definitely opened my mind and uh, introduced me to a entirely new way of thinking. He speaks of coincidences as um, co being with an incidence being something that occurs, but it's with a purpose. And of course, I call coincidences God incidences because I think that everything has a reason and a purpose in this life. And um, sometimes we may not completely understand why certain um, events occur, but they all occur for a, a reason. And of course, sometimes the the reason is is hard hard to um, uh, hard to understand at times. I think because there may be an event that um, challenges you in some way, shape, or form, and you may think that there is no justice in the universe, which is not true. Um, if you look through this lens that Dr. Chopra gives you, the lens of intention and non-local reality, he um, talks about how you can intuit everything into existence. And of course, the, he says the universe was brought into life because of that intuition. It's um, really a fascinating thought, and I completely agree with it. Um, he talks about something that has been occurring for eons, and that is local versus non-local reality. And local reality is what you can discern logically, um, compartmentalize, um, it's the body, the, the flash, uh, tactile objects, Anything that you can see, um, hear, all your senses are incorporated, except for your sixth sense. And the sixth sense is what comes into non-local reality, and that is your soul, and um, the metaphysical, um, what we understand as uh, the other side. Just so many different elements that go into that, and it's quite complex what he gets into. And I know it looks like a very small book. And it's only including the appendix it's, uh, 293 pages long. You can read it. Ah! Darn it. I dropped it. I should have done that. Sorry, Dad. I hope it didn't wake you. But anyway, it's 293 pages long. I read it in about a day or two, because I'd been busy with school, but I just couldn't put it down. It was just so compelling to me, and the arguments presented, I mean, the evidence presented um, in the book was just more of a confirmation of what I already know to be true, of this um, idea that um, intuition... Uh, passion, desire, all those energies, they're within all of us, and, and we have the ability to create what, whatever we like, and it's, <laughs> sometimes it's, it's uh, challenging to do, because I think so many of us become so weighed down with negative energies, and those who are the naysayers, and skeptics, and who say, well, I don't think that miracles exist. Look around you. The human being itself is a miracle. Think about that for a moment and ponder it. Just let it sink into your, your brain for a moment. Even think about how the, the chemical makeup of your, 
your neurons and your synapses actually function. Ponder that. That is a miracle too. And memory, that's another thing that just fascinates me. This thing that they found in 60 Minutes called non-local, um, I'm, no, excuse me, sorry, I was thinking of the book, um, autobiographical memory. And apparently some people, um, they have this ability and it's very, very rare. And I think that other people have it as well, but they haven't really dis um, um, come up with um, how many people actually have this. But anyway, I'm, I'm kind of digressing a bit, sorry. But anyhow, everything in this life is a miracle and everything has a vibration. And um, he talks about that in the book as well. And he also talks about how you can open yourself up to um, the, the world of non local reality by um, meditating. And I meditate. And meditation is just one of the ways I'm able to keep calm and um, keep my anger from messing with my um, my logic. And anger really doesn't do any good, to be honest with you. Of course, it's, it's okay to be angry, but not construct uh, de de const uh, constructive anger, because you can destroy a lot of things that are good and even hurt people. And um, about five years ago, uh, maybe even longer ago than that, I, I used to be a very angry person, and thank God I am no longer that human being, because I don't know her anymore. Um, but it talks about how you can become the person you want to be, how you can make the reality that you desire just from intuition, but that is not enough. You have to continuously do it. You have to visualize it so vividly that you can actually see yourself obtaining it tactily. And that, I think, is very powerful because I think that the mind, which is such a, a thing that even scientists don't completely grasp how absolutely astonishing the human brain really is. There's so much that they haven't discovered. I mean, just like I said in that piece of 60 Minutes about autobiographical memory. This is something entirely new that they just named and they have just scratched the surface of the capacity that our human brain holds. And to me, this kind of science excites me because it goes into a realm that just I absolutely adore. Because the whole idea of the brain itself, memory, a personality comes from here. How is that even possible? I, I have no other answer other than the divine sparkler. I, I just... I know a lot of people think you're hey, crazy. How can you be both a spiritualist, a Christian, and scientist? Well, I don't think that there's an argument between the two. And this book actually um, fuses the two together. And uh, I, I think that it is a necessary combination because you have to have the ability to hypothesize and make a opinions on your own, reach out, grasp, um, create empirical evidence of something, an element uh, existing, and then you go into uh, theoretical physics, and that's actually a very spiritual science, I, I believe, and I've said that before, and I, I think I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but <laughs> anyway, I really thought that this book was just mind opening and just made me really stop and ponder and, and realize how many things have come into my life not by coincidence at all but because they were meant to happen and they made me a better person I keep reinventing myself I keep um, I keep evolving as a person and it is because that I, I feel that um, 
I am becoming more spiritual. I am I'm becoming a, a better being. Because I know that this is just my tent. This is my temporary tent. Someday I will not have this tent anymore. And I will rejoin my um, ancestors and extended family um, in paradise. But for now, I just hope I can make the world a better place. And through uh, such knowledge as Dr. Chopra has left me with, I, I think I can do that. And it, it may seem like a, a small change, but a small change creates a ripple. And other people can be affected by that um, in the future. Just way in the future. I might not even know what I've done, but just there might there might be an effect that, that might happen maybe a decade down the line and somebody would come up to me and say, well, you remember when you did this, this, and this? And I would say, yeah. I did that ten years ago. Unbelievable. <laughs> and they would say that they had remembered that. And that it transformed them for the better and they thanked me for it. And of course I'm humbled and I say, no, don't, don't thank me for it. Because uh, <laughs> it's uh, not for my glory, but the one who created me. So um, that's all I have to say about spontaneous fulfillment of desire. If you want to read a book that really challenges you and makes you think more along the lines of the probabilities and possibilities that are out there, which are endless, then reach for this book and aim for the moon. And if you don't reach the moon, at least you'll land among the stars. <laughs>